Again, Gaza is under military assault. What did the Israelis hope to achieve this time round? Four years ago, an invasion killed over a thousand Palestinians and destroyed much of the Strip's infrastructure. In the end, Hamas remained intact and Gaza is still under siege. What can the Israelis do now that they haven't done before? To crosstalk the events unfolding in Gaza, I'm joined by Harry Fear in Gaza. He is a documentary filmmaker and activist. In Washington, we have Daniel Pollock. He is co-director of government relations for the Zionist Organization of America. And in New York, we cross to Norman Finkelstein. He is a political analyst and author. All right, gentlemen, crosstalk rules in effect. That means you can jump in as you wish. Uh, Harry, if I can go to you first, you're in Gaza. Tell us what's happened there, what you've seen over the last 24 hours. <laughs> Over the last 24 hours, we've seen an escalation in violence uh, from Israeli Air Force and Israeli naval vessels inflicted um, on practically every single part of the Gaza Strip, uh, even in the most recent moments before uh, we were recording this program. Um, earlier today, I had to uh, evacuate uh, a scene where I was uh, filming for a documentary as Israel struck um, areas uh, which are densely populated. The Gaza Strip is one of the most densely populated places on Earth. So everyone here is terrorized, including the internationals. And and nowhere actually is safe in Gaza tonight. Dan, are we seeing a repeat of what we saw four years ago? It's really up to Hamas. The, the uh, people of southern Israel have been in bomb shelters where they have less than 15 seconds warning. More than a million Israelis have spent the weekend in bomb shelters. Uh, during 2012, we have more than 900 missiles launched at Israel. And Israel has shown remarkable restraint. But now, what Israel has done, it's decapitated the military command of Hamas, and it attacked the missile storage spots. And that's what they've done so far. The next step is up to Hamas. Unfortunately, I'm told by the IDF in the last 24 hours, 245 missiles have been launched at Israel. So if they continue to do that, I'm sure there will be additional attacks, up to and including a ground assault if that's the only way for Israel to defend itself. Okay, Norman, where do you come in on this? I mean, another ground assault. You've written a book about the last one. Uh, no, I don't think there will be a ground assault, but I do think it's true that it's pretty similar in the build-up to what happened in 2008, 2009. Uh, back then, Israel was worried about what it called its deterrence capacity. That means its ability to terrorize people in the region after the defeat it suffered in 2006 by the party of God, the Hezbollah, in Lebanon. And now Israel has been suffering one foreign relations debacle after another. First, there was uh, Mr. Netanyahu, who smuggled the Iranian bomb into the UN and held up the bomb for everybody to see, but nobody took him seriously. And the consensus seemed to be that Netanyahu is a maniac, which he is. And then there was the uh, Hezbollah drone missile, which flew over and came quite close to Demona in Israel. Uh, then there was the uh, visit by the head of state of Qatar to uh, Gaza. And then there was the anticipated visit by the prime minister of Turkey to Gaza, namely Mr. Gerda, uh, Erdogan. And uh, also even their own puppet regime that they installed in the West Bank uh, namely the Palestinian Authority, was getting too uppity and threatening to okay, get so, to the okay, UN, me, let, going to the UN okay, to get okay, that does, uh, that's, that's, observer Norman, status. you covered a lot, a lot of ground right there. Harry, can you tell us what the, what's the consensus in Gaza? Is mm -hmm. a sense of dread that we're going to see the, a ground assault again? It was quite devastating. Um, how are people reacting? You're seeing it yourself. I've spoken to dozens and hundreds of Palestinians since this operation has been launched and all Palestinians I've spoken to expect things to get graver than they already have been over these last 48 hours. People are expecting a ground uh, in, in incursion. Um, we're getting reports, uh, various reports about that, um, saying that it may last several days. Uh, we've had three reports now of the IDF, uh, the Air Force, the Israeli Air Force, um, leafleting uh, north parts of the Gaza Strip. Uh, in Arabic, we've seen uh, 
the leaflet saying that we are going to uh, invade the Gaza Strip. So yes, people are prepared for that. Whether that is a psychological warfare tactic or whether it is actually going to happen or not, we, it remains to be seen. But everyone is on high alert, and the Gaza Strip is, is a, a much quieter I, place than it was I, a week ago. Dan, do you, would you like to jump in there? Go ahead. I, I love how humanitarian gesture by the IDF is interpreted as psychological warfare. What they're telling people to do in these leaflets is to not be human shields in front of missile launching facilities. Nobody's mentioned so far that three Israeli civilians were killed in Kiryat Malachi in southern Israel by missiles that were launched on purpose at civilians. All the Israeli attacks but are at military targets. Three days, three Palestinian well children knows, have been killed. That's what Israel One does. One pregnant woman has been killed. Dozens of children have been uh, injured. And the leaders you know, if I, if I say, war, this is what happens. Okay, yeah. Norman, you want to jump in? Go ahead. Yeah, but I'd like to come. Yeah. Uh, Dan, Dan talks about using human shields and uh, targeting civilians. So how the current round begin? There was a lull until November 8th. On November 8th, Israel, with its high-tech precision technology, Israel killed a Palestinian child. Then there was retaliatory acts by the Palestinian this, this resistance. Is, this is as usual, they targeted not soldiers. correct. There was For no example, lull. They fired on there the were G. hundreds and hundreds they fi they fired, of missiles they launched fired on, 2012. They Norman. fired. Uh, Dan, you're going to have to let me talk. Well, Dan, you're going to have to behave. Let me talk. You, you get your time, uh, Norman. You always do. Then the Palestinians retaliate by firing on, on right, by firing on um, Israeli soldiers. So how did Israel retaliate? Israel, with its high-tech precision technology, it then fired on the soccer field and killed two more Palestinian children. Then there was retaliation by the militant groups. And what did Israel do next? Well, there was a funeral for the two children who they killed in the soccer field. Israel targeted the funeral of the two children fired on the tent. Now, Dan has now, to agree with me that Israel has no, precision. Norman, that's, that's so untrue. And you, and you uh, know it's killing, untrue. Let me just uh, say, if, if we're allowed to killed, correct the facts here, That's how it Peter, killed Mr. The, the truth is, is that Israel Jabari. does have these high-tech weapons. Yeah, so the whole world saw children? the precision with which right. Israel attacked the commander of Hamas, military commander, and if Israel were indiscriminately attacking totally one of the most agree. densely populated cities All right, on Earth, gentlemen, let me, let me go back Harry to Harry in Gaza. Gaza. Uh, Harry, let me go back to, many, let many me go deaths. back to Gaza, gentlemen. Uh, Harry, the Is Israeli Home Defense Minister Avi Dichter said, quote, there is no precedent in history of destroying terror by air power alone. It hasn't happened and it won't happen. Thus, it is necessary to reformat Gaza altogether. Reformat Ga Gaza. What does that mean to you? Well, this means to me more psychopathic language coming from the State of Israel, and I mean that absolutely critically and coldly. That is the kind of nature of the military operation that they're launching. It's obvious by the name of the operation, Operation Pillar of Cloud, is a biblical reference. Uh, these are people that are employing psychopathic language to justify psychopathic violence being inflicted on a largely defenseless third world population here in Gaza. Last Thursday, a 13-year-old boy was uh, killed yes. by Israeli force playing football Football. That is one of the events that has started this retaliation. Um, so that is the, the real context of what is going on here in Gaza. Children are being killed. I was in the hospital 90 minutes ago. I met Israel one of been the uh, extraordinarily, young men who was actually injured at a funeral parade that was targeted at okay. the weekend I, I think, by okay. Israel. You know, Dan, uh, precision weapons, okay, you can get the head it, of Hamas, it, but then you kill children. I mean, how precise are they? Are they precisely killing children? If you look at the uh, Israeli record of using these precision weapons and compare it with uh, when Russia has been in combat, when the United States has been in combat, when Britain has been in combat, there are far fewer civilian deaths in these conflicts that Israel has participated in than any other Western power. That's absolutely true. And the truth is, when you start a war and there's no country on earth that would allow hundreds and hundreds of missiles to be fired at his territory without responding. When you start a war, there are consequences. Israel is not going to sit idly by 
while I, I believe agree the with you is exactly that there is no country or national 900, entity on earth that would actually accept the missiles to be struck into their territory. Compare that to only 238 in that 2010. That is exactly what is happening Things here in Gaza. Things are getting worse. Missiles and are being struck into Gaza. All right, I want Norman to have fair time, children. gentlemen. Norman, jump in. Well, if you read the Israeli papers, and I have been reading them the past few days, unlike what Dan says, what's happening in Gaza has very little to do with what's hap with Gaza itself. Sure. Most of the Israeli commentators freely acknowledge it's not even a matter of trying to use double language. They freely acknowledge or they say that this has to do with an upcoming election. That in fact, Mr. Jabari, the person who they targeted, Mr. Jabari, he was what Haaretz, Israel's leading newspaper, they described him as, quote, and I'm using their words, Mr. Jabari was Israel's enforcer in, the, in yeah. the Gaza Strip. He was the one who kept things quiet for the past several years. What they years. meant by that, first of but all, Israel now Haaretz, wants to make Norman, a little display is the paper of, of record for people like you in Israel. It has a tiny circulation. But what they were saying in that article in Haaretz mm -hmm. is that he ha was unwilling or unable to make mm -hmm. other Islamic organizations, besides the Islamic resistance, Hamas, stop firing missiles at Israel. In fact, Hamas they was never claiming said credit unwilling. for the latest series yeah, I don't of missiles. Never said I want to go to Harry. I want to go to Harry, gentlemen. Resistance. Twenty in, in seconds that, before we go to the break, hearts. Harry, go ahead. Well, I don't know what this term is, Islamic resistance. Surely 1% of the population of Palestinians do resist with an armed resistance, which is justified and uh, put in international law as a right for the Palestinians to take up arms, to expel uh, occupiers and oppressors from their territory. Palestinian children are being killed. Palestinian resistance groups fire, fire rockets into Israel. All right, to gentlemen, I'm going to jump in here. We're going to go to a short break. And after that short break, we'll continue our discussion on Gaza. Stay with us. Welcome back to Crosstalk. I'm Peter Lavelle. To remind you, we're talking about the ongoing assault on Gaza. Okay, Dan, I'd like to go back to you in Washington. No country should accept being, Dan, no country should accept being bombed. I agree. The Palestinians probably shouldn't be bombed either. But what about the right of uh, resistance, okay? The siege that is going on in Gaza. What right do the Palestinians have to resist? 